Yes, yes, Sir Hell is here. Today we have a new artist to the channel. This is Adam Lambert and he's performing Shares Believe. This is at the Kennedy Center. This performance was a recent poll winner for our members and it won with flying colors. Adam Lambert, I don't know him, but I do know that he's the front man of Queen. When they perform, I believe they're called Queen and Adam Lambert. He's had that role since 2011. Filling in Freddie Mercury's shoes. Well, not filling in or replacing him. I feel like Freddie's legacy is to remain separate, but performing with Queen, singing, those songs yet yeah, he must have some serious lungs on him and everything else that contributes to a great voice i'm sure i've never heard him sing before all i'm wondering at the moment is how similar he might sound to freddie mercury i've received a number of requests for adam singing various queen songs so maybe in the future we'll find out but now though this is a share cover i just had a quick fact check and believe the song is from 1998 i thought it was older than that but that's because there are covers of this song that i listened to instead of the original So I'm used to a calmer setting of this song without the dance beat. To re-familiarise myself with the original song, I have just listened to it a couple of times. Let's see what Adam Lambert does with it. It's so sad that you're leaving It takes time to believe it After all that's said and done You're gonna be the lonely one oh, Do you believe in love after love? I can feel something inside me say I really don't think you're strong Oh, some surprises in there for sure. Definitely things that caught me off guard there. Um, yeah, my initial thoughts. I really like it. Let's go over the analysis of what we've just heard. If you don't want to hear my analysis, go to the timestamp here. So first things first, the key. He is singing in F, whereas the original is one note above that. It's just that tiny bit lower than the original, which means that it's still very high, but with his voice, evidently it's no problem. He has that higher range with ease. His opening, that was really surprising. Not that it seemed rushed, but it just happened so quickly he was still walking when he started singing. And the first word, no, is not sung. It's more like a n sound, no matter. Matter, almost. The melody itself, now this is the first thing we hear of this performance, and this is the first thing I've ever heard of him. He's changed the melody. We are in F major. He begins on this note here, the fifth note of F. Whereas Cher, if we transposed her song into this key, would be starting on this note. The third note. Based on this, I immediately know he has a high voice. Usually things start low and then move upwards throughout the performance, if the performance grows overall as it progresses. I think it's tactical as well, and let me explain why in a second. No how hard the opening, overall, it's very reserved. It's as minimal as it can physically be, without being just him singing or one note in the piano or something. It's just one chord at a time with Adam singing. So his melodic change that he made at the beginning, I think it's a tactical decision to mitigate variety. He repeats the same melody for the second line. No matter how hard I try, you keep pushing me aside. In other words, he sung the melody of the second line, the actual melody of the second line, first. Choosing the same melody, less variety, more reserved, everything is reserved here. The music, him, he's standing still. It's all as reserved as it can be. It's a great way of just immediately grabbing everyone's focus. The first little non-reserved element we hear comes in the piano here. It takes time to believe it. The notes of that chord are ever so slightly arpeggiated, which is then followed by a single piano note. It takes time to believe it. After all that's said and done. 
And then things have kind of unlocked and we get more frequent piano chords. Things are starting to build up. Then a bit further on, there are a number of interesting things happening here. The most obvious being the choice of the instrumentation. We have this bell sound or like chime sounds, the strings. They're all to create this close-knit emotional feel. Having the strings play these juicy chords, the different string instruments having similar timbres to each other, it enhances the juiciness of them. Right, so onto these chords. The chords chosen here for the chorus are the standout difference to me from the original song. So in the original, if we were to transpose those chords into Adam's key, we'd expect to hear this. Or if we think of them in terms of numbers, one, five, two, minor. But we don't get that here. What do we get? Do you believe in love after love? Well, we get the same first chord, one, which is the same. But then instead of five and then two minor, we instead get one, two minor, and then six minor. So the chords we hear, the harmonic progression is completely changed. The first chord is the same. The second chord uses the same chord but in the different order. And then the third chord is completely different. Now, changing these chords, I don't think it's random. This is clearly a nice chord progression that is used to evoke certain emotions in us. We've seen this pattern used in several of my other reactions. The one that comes to mind is Pentatonic's Little Drummer Boy. <laughs> Why that one comes to mind is because they have completely changed the chord progression from the original song. The card for my reaction to that will be up here if you're interested. It's those same chords, one to two minor to six minor. All right, on to Adam's voice. Do you believe in love after love? Such ease he has singing up there. He's one of those rare breeds of people whose chest voice and head voice are connected seamlessly by a blended voice. We can think of this like a color scale. That phrase there, he starts using predominantly his chest voice, his full voice. He grows into each note. I can feel something. And then at the end of the phrase, on the word say, he switches to this airy head voice dominated blend. But it's so smooth, we can barely notice it. And then in the next phrase, on the word strong enough, we get three notes. G A G. That first G is in his chest voice. Then when he moves up to the A, he's now changed his voice. And then when he goes back down to the G, he's now using this changed voice. From the one minute I've heard him sing so far, I think that's why he's so suited in the upper registers because of the control he has up there, switching the different types of voice he uses. He has a high chest voice anyway, which means he can go higher than normal people. That said, I do like how he's choosing to use this airy, lighter voice. I say when Dimash uses this airy voice, it's for calmer music and is more emotional. But I can tell Adam has a powerful high chest voice. We get a glimpse of it here. I can feel something inside me say. I really don't think you're strong enough. Before he moves away from it. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that we get to see this later on. I'll be very surprised if we don't. All right, let's carry on. Now, what am I supposed to do? Sit around and wait for you. Well, I can't do that. There's no turning back It takes time to move on It takes love to feel strong Cause I got time to think it through And baby I'm too good for you And I know that I'll get through this. 
looks like we've just reached a reduced quieter section. Let's just go over a few things we heard from the last bit and then we'll carry on until the end. So from where we started off, I thought that was a nice, we get this kind of effect in the guitar, probably done by a whammy bar or something. And Adam compliments it with that phrase he's just sung. A little slide into the notes, you know, this very relaxed kind of feeling. And this relaxation causes some pitch adjustment to the original melody. Instead of... We get... So it's that chromatic inflection. Very nice. And then he pops out his earpiece. Well, I can't do that. There's no turning back. I think artists do this when they're planning on going a bit crazy, singing high, loud, that kind of thing. So it's got me anticipating. And then just after that, we see the arrangement really start to open up for the first time. We have a beat, we get violins playing a distinct counter melody. It takes time to move on. It takes love to feel strong. And quite a few new individual lines and other instruments being heard for an overall thicker texture, such as this line we just heard, which stood out to me, which goes, a nice little motif taken from the melody and put into the background. Strong, so further on, I find this interesting. Uh, there. Usually when we hear these voice breaks, I like to think of them as mini individual yodels. <laughs> where we clearly move from chest voice to head voice. The first note is clearly chest voice. But the note after the break isn't clearly head voice. It sounds to me much more chesty, probably a blend. It's very interesting and I wonder if that's intentional or just how his voice naturally sings that pitch after coming off a glottal stop type thing. And then another thing I find interesting is here, his decision to move the mic away from his mouth. It might be a natural reaction as he's moving up in pitch, he requires more power, so mic further away. But at the same time, we hear this lovely bass line underneath. No, baby, strong enough, no. What was that? Strong enough, no. So we get this. Yeah, some nice things to listen out for there. All right, let's carry on to the end. Really no, baby, strong enough, no. And I know that I'll get through this. Cause I know that I am strong I don't need you anymore 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 Do you Full house standing ovation, I think very deserved. Yeah, wow, what a voice. And taking a song and completely transforming it from this dance track into this ballad in front of the original performer, Cher too, and a lot of other famous faces in there. So the last section, we get this kind of intensely calm section, redolent of the beginning. And I know that I'll get through this. I find those little breaths he does to be quite captivating. He does another one just afterwards. <laughs> and he finishes with one as well. It's just not what 
you're expecting. Usually we get a breath before someone's about to start singing, not normally after the phrase. They're also a nice way to add a bit of a percussive element into the mix because of how reduced things are at this moment. And I know that I'll get through this. I don't know, I just think it kind of hits you like a beat does. Just after that, we get this sustained note in the violins. Up the octave. I don't need you anymore. It's like an inverse drone. Usually you get drones in the lower parts, the bass parts, acting as this kind of harmonic foundation underneath everything. Having this sustained note in the violins above, I feel it acts as this kind of natural creator of tension. Anytime other notes change, like Adam when he's singing various phrases of the melody, it will create temporary dissonance with the held note and then resolution, such as at this moment. So if we have the note held in the top, and then he sings this, and we can hear these temporary clashes. And of course the other instruments playing as well. So there's this subtle tension building up, even though it's this really serene moment of the song. And here too, especially with this secondary melodic line we hear. Do you believe in life the secondary line we hear. And then after that we get this, listen to the bass part. A chromatic rising bass motif to change up the harmony. And going back to the fa and going back to the famous faces. It's Lin Manuel Miranda, the composer of We Don't Talk About Bruno. That was my most recent voice play reaction. That's cool to see. And then of course we get this standout moment. This D up here. That's two semitones or half steps above a top C, which is what I call a wow moment for operatic tenors, which perfectly sets up the ending. It seems high, but it's a fair bit lower than that climactic top note we've just heard because of the different type of voice he's using. All right, well, I think let's leave that one there. Very cool, obviously has a great voice. I'm very keen to explore him, especially singing with Queen. I love Queen, I love a lot of their music, so it'll be cool to see those. Comment down below any other songs by Adam Lambert you'd like me to react to. As always, thank you very much for watching. Would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, want to join the community, vote on future polls and support me, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked below. And and I will see you next time.